How's it going everyone? It is Pangino here and today I'm going to be bringing you guys the ultimate guide on setting up NVIDIA Reflex. NVIDIA Reflex is a fantastic brand new technology from NVIDIA which will help you drastically reduce your input latency in GPU bound scenarios. This works on every single NVIDIA graphics card both for desktop and mobile from the NVIDIA GTX 900 series and above. Alongside enabling NVIDIA Reflex with inside of this video we're also going to be going over a few more optimizations, setup and tips and tricks to ensure that you're getting the most out of your monitor, mouse, keyboard and overall input latency from the moment you click the mouse button to the moment the frame is displayed on your monitor. Even if your most played games are currently not supported with NVIDIA Reflex, watching this video and going through most of the optimizations with inside of it will ensure that you are also getting the lowest level of input latency possible, even if NVIDIA Reflex hasn't reached your favorite game yet. And for all hardware used with inside of this video, if you are interested in any of it, feel free to check out all hardware links in the description down below, where you'll be brought directly to any of the products which have been used in this video, kindly provided by NVIDIA and MSI. If you guys do enjoy this video and are happy with your results, please do remember to leave a like on the video as it does help me out tremendously and let me know of your results, questions, queries and which hardware you're using in that comment section down below. With all that said and done, let's get straight on into the video. For the purpose of this video, I'm going to be showcasing this on my NVIDIA RTX 3080 and my NVIDIA GTX 1650 mobile GPU on my laptop. We're first of all going to be showing that we're running on the latest GPU drivers available for our system. Simply navigate inside of the description down below to the GeForce driver download link. With inside of this web page, you can either go up to the automatic driver updates utility found up here in the top or you can manually search for your graphics card itself. So for me on this PC, I'm currently running on a GeForce graphics card. I'm running on an RTX 30 series. My product is an RTX 3080. I'm running on Windows 10 64 bit and my language is English. We can then go ahead and press start search. We're going to be going ahead with the GeForce game ready driver at the top, which is going to be the latest driver available for your graphics card. So navigate over to get download, navigate up to the top right hand side to download now. Once the driver is finished downloading, simply navigate down to the bottom left hand side and open this driver up. You can then go ahead and press OK to extract the driver. You can choose just to install the NVIDIA graphics card driver if you don't want the NVIDIA GeForce experience, but I'm personally going to be installing both. We can then go down to agree and continue. I like to select the express installation, then press next. The graphics card driver will then be installed to your PC. Throughout the installation process, your monitor may turn off a few times and flicker a few times. This is completely normal. And at the end of the installation, you may be advised to quickly restart your PC to ensure that it's completely loaded the brand new driver. Once you've updated your graphics card driver, we can then set some simple and essential settings to ensure that we're getting the best performance out of our graphics card and the lowest level of input latency. To do this, simply right click on your desktop and open up inside of the NVIDIA control panel. Once inside of the NVIDIA control panel, navigate up to adjust image settings with preview in the top left hand side. Ensure that the middle option titled use the advanced 3D image settings has been select then press apply. Navigate over to manage 3D settings on the left hand side. With inside of this menu we're going to proceed to scroll down. We're going to find the power management mode for our graphics card and set this to prefer maximum performance. We're then also going to find the option for texture filtering quality. Go into the drop down menu and set this to high performance. Those are the only two options we're going to be changing with inside of this video, but if you would like to see a full video of a breakdown of all of the settings with inside of here and what to set for the best performance across the board, you can check out that video on the screen now by clicking the card on the top right hand side or in the description down below. We can then proceed to go down to the bottom right hand side and press apply. We're then going to navigate down to the change resolution tab, allowing us to change and adjust our refresh rate to ensure that we're getting the most performance out of our monitor as possible. As you can see here, I'm currently using the MSI MAG 322 CQR monitor, which is a 2560 by 1440, 165 hertz monitor with a one millisecond response time. Now to unlock all of those features and to ensure that they are all running perfectly on our system, once you've plugged the monitor in, preferably by display cable or HDMI 2.0 at least, once the monitor is then connected to the PC and you're inside the change resolution tab, we want to go down and select the maximum resolution possible under the PC category in the NVIDIA control panel. So once you go down to the PC resolutions, as you can see, my maximum is going to be 2560 by 1440. Once I click on that, I can then go ahead and select any of the refresh rates which are available for my monitor. Once that's been selected, we can then go down to the bottom right hand side and press apply and our monitor is now successfully running on the maximum refresh rate possible. We're also going to be going through our actual monitor settings built into the monitor later on in the video so make sure that you do stick around for that as that is also a vital step in ensuring that you are getting the lowest response times possible. Now that we've successfully updated our GPU drivers and set some essential settings for the graphics card driver itself we can now go ahead and boot into any of the games which are supported for NVIDIA Reflex. For the purpose of this stage of the video I'm going to be using Valorant. Once you've booted into the game of your choice go ahead and boot into a match and find a simple spot on the map where you can monitor your FPS. What we now need to go ahead and do is actually enable NVIDIA Reflex with inside of our game. It's very simple and easy to do this, just simply go ahead and press escape on your keyboard and navigate inside of the in-game settings. For me in Valorant, you can see that I have the option for NVIDIA Reflex Low Latency. We have the option to turn this on, on plus boost and off. Now depending on which graphics card you have installed to your system is going to depend on my recommendation as to what you should have this option set to. If you have a GeForce GTX series card, I would recommend actually having this set to on 
plus boost. If you have an Nvidia RTX card for the best results possible, I'd recommend going just with on. So for me using my RTX 3080 here, I'm going to be setting this to on, but if I was on my laptop, which is using a GTX 1650 mobile, I'd be going with on plus boost. There are a few other things on which we can do to drastically improve our FPS. That's by going into the in-game settings. Now this will work on any game. We're first of all going to be changing our display mode from windowed full screen to full screen. We're then also going to be ensuring that our resolution is set to our maximum refresh rate. Once again, for this monitor, it's 165 hertz. Once that's been done, we can then navigate over to our graphics quality tab. Now, assuming that Valorant is a highly competitive game and we're searching for the best level of FPS and lowest input latency possible, there is no reason to be running this game maxed out and we're losing out on a ton of performance from doing this. Setting these settings alone is actually going to drastically improve my FPS. As you can see here, we're currently running at around about 730 frames per second. So from setting our in-game settings up for a more competitive advantage has not only boosted our FPS, it's also drastically decreased our total frame render time. Some of you may prefer a highly competitive, lower graphically intensive game for better FPS, and some of you may opt towards maintaining a lot of those graphical settings for a much better looking game. If you are interested in further tailoring your in-game settings towards your personal preference, but getting a drastic improvement to your FPS, you can definitely check out other videos on my channel where I go through most popular games showing you the best in-game settings to enable for the best FPS possible and the lowest level of input latency. Now depending on which game you're playing, the Nvidia Reflex Low Latency options could be stored away in different in-game settings menus. Just simply take the time to find the latest supported game list of all games which are compatible with Nvidia Reflex, then take the time to go through all of the in-game menu options until you find the Nvidia Reflex options available to you. For the first of these optimizations, we're going to be going ahead and actually changing our mod monitor settings themselves. Most of the time you're going to have buttons underneath the monitor, along the side, but in this case I actually have this very easy to use joystick to control all of the monitor settings. Simply go ahead and navigate into the main options menu of your monitor. The options available to you could be named slightly differently and you may not have all of the options shown here, or you may have some which are not involved. Starting off with inside of this MSI monitor, we're going to be navigating down to our response time. With inside of here this will give us the option for normal, fast and fastest. These are going to be the options which are going to help you get that advertised millisecond response time of your monitor. As you can see here on the MSI monitor, it is advertised to have a one millisecond response time. But going with the normal preset, we actually do not get this response time. For the one millisecond response time, we need to be going with fast or fastest. What I recommend going ahead and doing is trying out the fastest profile on your monitor, going ahead and simply wiggling your mouse around on a high speed game. If the image still looks good and you're not getting any reverse ghosting or smearing issues, I would go ahead and use the fastest profile available until you start finding you have those issues. Whilst we're in here as well, it's also worth while well, to go ahead and just look through all of the settings with inside of your monitor in terms of color grading and other widely available modes such as MSI's night vision mode, which is commonly found on other monitors as well. Setting this to stronger levels will actually reduce the level of shadows inside of games, making it easier to spot enemies in low lit areas. This is also where you'll be finding options to turn on free sync, G-Sync, or in some cases, adaptive sync. If you have any of these options available to you and you wish to use any of those technologies, this is where you'll be able to have the main control over those options available to you in the video control panel. Down here, as you can see, this monitor does support FreeSync, which is G-Sync compatible. If I turn this to the on or off position, this will become either available or not available with inside of the NVIDIA control panel. So if you have found that you have got a G-Sync compatible monitor and you haven't been able to find the option with inside of the control panel, go ahead and change this option found here to turn this on. That coupled with the response time in which we just adjusted will now be giving us the best performance out of our monitor and helping us achieve that lowest response time possible. Now moving on to our peripherals and hardware installed to our PC. I'd first of all recommend taking out all unnecessary USB devices from the PC which do not need to be connected throughout usual usage. So if you have excess hard drives, USB sticks, cables plugged into the PC just to charge your phone, this coupled with a fast gaming mouse can also be reducing your performance of that mouse and making it a lot less consistent. Now when you're plugging all of your USB devices back into the PC, it's recommended to have both your mouse and keyboard, especially if they are gaming oriented and support low latency, plugged into the fastest available USB slots on your motherboard. Depending on the age, make or model of your motherboard, it will depend on what USB slots are available to you. For the most part, the black USB slots are going to be USB 2.0, blue USB slots are going to be USB 3.0, and red USB slots are going to be USB 3.1. If you are using a high speed mouse which supports 500 or 1000 hertz, it is recommended to have the mouse plugged in to a high speed USB slot such as your USB 3 or 3.1 header. And speaking of peripherals, we're first of all going to be going over our mouse. For me, I'm going to be using MSI's Clutch GM50 mouse which was kindly provided to me by them. And the great thing about this mouse alongside having RGB and being a great form factor is that it supports up to 1000 hertz polling rate or refresh rate. This is how many times the mouse communicates with your PC within a second. Most non-gaming mice only operate 
rate at around about 125 hertz, and a lot of common gaming mice only run up to 500. But in this case, using 1000 hertz means that we can have much lower input latency from our mouse inputs, and because we're doubling the data rate being sent back and forth, they can actually be a lot more fluid and smooth as well. So a 1000 or 500 hertz mouse is always a fantastic option for reducing your input latency. Now moving on to keyboard. For the keyboard, I'm going to be using MSI's Vigor GK50 Elite keyboard, which actually features high speed kale white switches. The benefits of having a mechanical keyboard in most cases, it can actually be much faster and more reliable than an old traditional membrane keyboard. They can be a slight bit more expensive than basic keyboards out there, but a mechanical keyboard is a fantastic investment to make if you are serious about getting the best performance possible. Audio. For this, I'm going to be using MSI's immersive GH61 gaming headset. Now for low latency audio, you do have a few options available to you. I'd either recommend going with earbuds or earphones or going with a traditional headset like this one. The only thing for the most part I'd recommend doing is actually going with a wired headset, whether it be a 3.5 millimeter jack or a USB dongle headset like this one found here. Most headsets and earphones will work absolutely perfectly and those are highly recommended over using traditional speakers or older wireless headsets. If you've gone with a brand spanking new extremely expensive wireless headset, that's going to be absolutely fine as well. But I would recommend staying away from older or very cheap Bluetooth wireless headsets as the latency from the audio with inside of there can really start to get lacking and will take away from your gaming experience. To start off with our Windows settings for both mouse and keyboard, we're going to navigate down to the bottom left hand side, click on our Windows button. First of all, starting off with our mouse, we're going to be typing in mouse space settings just like so. Go inside of the mouse settings tab. We're then going to navigate to the top right hand side to additional mouse options. We're then going to navigate over to pointer options found up here in the top. The following settings are going to help us remove any and all mouse acceleration from Windows, helping our mouse inputs be much more precise and more predictable. To start off, we're going to be unchecking the option for enhanced pointer precision. We're then going to take our mouse pointer speed and drag this all the way down to option one. We're then going to be increasing this to six. I like to use my arrow keys on my keyboard for this to be more precise. So we're already running on option one. So we're going to be going to two, three, four, five, six. Once that's then been set to six, we can then go ahead and press apply. Moving on to our keyboard settings, we're going to be navigating to the bottom left hand side once again, going to our windows button and typing in keyboard. Click on keyboard with inside of here. What we're then going to go ahead and do is ensure that our character repeat rate for repeat delay and repeat rate are both set to fast and short. These will not defaultly be set to this, so drag both of the sliders all the way to the right hand side, then press apply, then press OK. That helps with the response time of multiple keyboard presses of the same key. So let's say you're pressing A and D fast on the keyboard as you're jiggle peeking someone on an FPS game. That's going to help Windows detect those multiple inputs of the same key very fast and much more predictably, helping reduce your input latency and have much more predictable keyboard inputs. This now leads us on to one of the most important optimizations to set with inside of this entire video if you are using a relatively decent gaming mouse. As mentioned before, I'm using MSI's Clutch GM50 mouse, which actually has bundled software with it, in which we can use to unlock some of the advanced settings which will help us access that low input latency 1000 hertz mode I was talking about earlier. If you do not have any mouse software installed for your mouse, don't panic. For this, just simply go ahead and take your mouse, turn it upside down, and you should then be able to see the make of the mouse. So for me, I'm using the MSI Clutch GM50 mouse. Once you've typed out the make and model of the mouse, we're then going to simply add software to the end of that search and press enter. You'll then be able to find multiple Google results for your mouse and see if there is any software available for you. Your software may look a lot different from this, but this option should be available somewhere with inside of your settings. To access the option, we're going to be navigating over to Sensor with inside of this mouse. And as you can see here, we now have the option for polling rate. In some mouse software, this can be called refresh rate, hertz. On this mouse here, as you can see, it's defaultly set to 500 hertz, but we do actually have the option available for 1000 hertz. Now, regardless of which mouse you're using, I'd recommend setting the highest available hertz with inside of here for the best response time possible for your mouse mouse. Once that's been set, we can now ensure that we have the lowest input latency possible on our mouse. We're using a nice low latency keyboard and we've ensured that we're not using any high latency audio equipment and are using a 165 hertz monitor coupled with NVIDIA Reflex. All of those tips, tricks, tweaks and optimizations set alongside enabling NVIDIA Reflex with inside of your game and tweaking your in-game settings, we've now made sure that we have unlocked the best performance possible for your system, allowing you to get the best gains possible and the lowest level of input latency for the best gaming experience. Again, if you have enjoyed this video, and I'm happy with your results, please do leave a like on the video as it does help me out tremendously. And make sure that you do let me know of your results, questions, queries, and more importantly, let me know of your system specs in that comment section down below and any games you'd like to see NVIDIA Reflex added to in the future. Thank you ever so much for taking the time to watch this video. I've been Pangino and I'll see you in the next one.